How's everybody doing? Good. Okay, Good. great. I'm glad that we got to talk uh, with one another before I started because uh, I learned earlier today that uh, although I prepared a 50 minute presentation, that we're going to be we could be here potentially till 6:30 p.m. So it's good. That's good because that means we can discuss things, and I don't have to be pressed for time. Uh, so I'm I start here by showing you the desktop with my baby daughter pictured on it because I'm talking today about migrants' remittances. These are migration-related economic transactions. Well, it just so happens that I am a migrant. I am a migrant laborer. I came here from California, which is. 700 and, well, Sacramento, California, which is 700 and some odd miles away. And my family lives all over the United States. And they invest in us. They send us money and clothes. And these are remittances. So I, I wanted to show you a picture of my daughter who is a, a, a beneficiary of remittances. And a very cute one at that. <laughs> so, uh, I think I've pressed this button. No, I'll just press this button, <laughs> and then F5. So today I'm going to talk about migrants' remittances as a form of human cooperation that I hope we can better understand by employing some of the same theory and general, a uh, general broad theory and methods that some social scientists who employ uh, both genetic and cultural evolutionary theory to understand human behavior particularly sharing behavior in smaller scale societies, subsistence societies, okay? And, and also, I hope that we can assess the extent to which we can apply this method of theory to this type of behavior, okay? And that's volume, that's not a lot of volume. There we go. So what are remittances? I, I already gave you a little anecdotal uh, example of remittances, but in general, there's a popular notion that they're the, uh, they're the uh, a proportion of a migrant's earnings that they send back to households in the, in the, the host country, right? And these, usually, these households usually comprise, are comprised of family and or friends of the migrant. We'll talk about some problems with this model of what remittances are uh, in a little bit, but, but this basic relationship, this type of, of migration-related economic transaction is very important, and it's quite newsworthy. So to give you an example of uh, the newsworthiness of migrants' remittances, um, you all have heard about the, the, earth, the recent earthquake in Haiti. Well, Haiti's GDP, uh, a very large proportion of it, comes from remittances. Okay? It comes from outside the country. And it comes from people sending money to their families. Well, when the earthquake hit, the, uh, the, the, the remittance, the money transfer operators, shut down. So a huge source of, of finance for families was just suddenly gone temporarily. So some of there were, after some heroic efforts to reopen this remittance corridor, it was reopened, the money started pouring in because people tend to insure their families against such catastrophes. That's one function that remittances play uh, or perform. And, uh, and then people start, so families started to be able to pay for the the very expensive food and water that was being pilfered from foreign agencies and sold in the black market. So, but this map gives you a bigger, a broader perspective of the, the macroeconomic importance of remittances in different countries as a proportion of the gross domestic product of the nation in 2004. And darker colors represent uh, a larger proportion of the GDP explained by remittances. Do any of you ex uh, see anything interesting about this map in light of what the colors mean? They're, they're concentrated. Where do they seem to be concentrated? Globally. I'm going to say less developed countries. Yes, exactly. The macroeconomic importance of remittances is concentrated in, the, uh, in, in developing countries, le less developed countries, yeah. particularly in less developed countries. Yeah. Okay, which is, is different from a, it's uh, just a developing country. So there's the least developed countries, less developing countries. You probably, guys probably know this, you're also Okay, so this, this chart gives you a longitudinal perspective 
of the, the, the macroeconomic importance of remittances over time, with the horizontal axis being years, and, uh, and, and, and these last two years are estimated, uh, and it stops in 2005, because there's a lag in the data that we have available uh, for remittances, right? And the y-axis is billions of dollars. This black line is remittances, and you see this uh, rate of increase that's pretty rapid, and uh, seem to have leveled out in recent years. Uh, although those are estimates. Um, and then let's compare this line to some of the other sources of, of finance to developing countries. So this red dashed line is foreign direct investment. Okay, it's like, it's like investing in companies or things like that, okay? Um, and we see that remittances are now, and they still are, very close second to foreign direct investment. You know, you know what this green line is? Oh, have you guys already looked at it? <laughs> yeah. This green line is official development assistance, foreign aid, okay? And this is, this is the mid-90s. So we see that remittances have surpassed official development assistance as a source of, 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 of finance for developing countries since the mid-90s. In 2008, remittances to developing countries numbered, what is it, $338 billion. And that is greater than three times the official aid to developing countries from uh, members of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Okay. So the, 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 the macroeconomic importance is concentrated in developing countries. But what about the microeconomic importance? So the importance to, to households, individuals. Well, the, the uh, International Fund for Agricultural Development estimates, pretty crude, estimates that in developing countries, 90% of remittances received are spent on food, housing, and other necessities. So this, might, this tells us that remittances might have some, some, some poverty-reducing effects. And to give you some anecdotal examples of those poverty-reducing effects, we take a look at the case of Ghana. Sometime in the last decade, I'm not sure. I think this is a cross-sectional study. But in Ghana, uh, whenever the study was done, uh, within the last decade, poverty levels as defined by the UN were 5% lower than what they would be if there were no remittance inflows. And that's, that's pretty big. Well, what about Uganda? That's Uganda, right? Yeah. That figure is 11%, which is huge. Okay, the poverty level is 11% lower than what it would be without remittances. Okay. But remittances are Remittances are, are uh, imperfect at poverty reduction, okay? And uh, one, one reason why is because they tend to benefit certain types of individuals. So this, uh, this the x-axis here is income quantile. So like, this is the median, okay? And very few people make this much money, okay? And very few people make this little money. And the bars represent the percent of Sri Lankan households that move to a higher income quantile, after this, in this case a decile, after receiving remittances in 19, between 1999 and 2000. So does anybody see uh, something that I'm trying to show in this graph about who benefits from remittances? Yeah, these people, something's going on here. It's probably because they receive remittances after they get screwed or, you know, like, out of their job or something. Yeah. And these people don't receive much benefit at all because they don't receive much remittances at all. Because, exactly, middle-income people receive the most remittances and they benefit the most from remittances. So what foreign agencies are trying to do is spread these benefits out, particularly to the lower quantiles of the distribution. In order to do that, we have to figure out what motivates people to remit. And that motivates, you know, at least partially, along with a whole bunch of other stuff, why I'm interested in remittances. Um, so another reason why remittances are imperfect at poverty reduction is because they're vulnerable to the global economy okay, they're, and its vicissitudes. So I don't know what the, the current numbers are, but in 2009, there was a projected 2.9% contraction in global GDP, which led to uh, a projection of a 7 to 10% contraction in the remittance economy within the next ten, two years. So